This video shows how to use the DTL editor in InterSystems IRIS data platform to transform an X12 message to meet the requirements of your target system. Consider a case where you are routing eligibility inquiries from provider systems to multiple health insurance organizations, also known as payers. Incoming EDI270 messages have N4 segments with the state name written out in that field. This is incompatible with the requirements of the receiving organization's systems, which use state abbreviations. Before sending the message to those organizations, you need to transform this data field by applying a lookup table to this field to convert between full state names and their abbreviations. To better understand this transformation procedure, let's start by reviewing the structure of an X12 message. As you might recall, an X12 message has three nested messaging layers, the interchange envelope, the functional group, and the transaction set. The interchange envelope contains one or more functional groups, and those functional groups contain one or more transaction sets. A transaction set contains a single X12 transaction made up of data segments. The data transformation language, or DTL, usually transforms the data segments inside of this transaction set. In the example of routing eligibility inquiries, you'll need to modify just one field within one of these segments. Looking at this from the inside out, the DTL modifies a data segment within one or more transaction sets, which are contained in a functional group. More than one functional group can exist in the same interchange envelope. In technical terms, this means the target of your data transformation, the data segment, is inside of two nested objects. For this reason, the DTL must loop through each functional group, then subloop through each of the transaction sets within these functional groups. The next part of this video shows how you can build transformations using the DTL editor. You will see an overview of this process, followed by a full demonstration. Let's look at the general steps for the process of instantiating and populating the target message object at each level of nested loops. First, create the object in the target message. For auditing purposes, the DTL instantiates a new X12 message so as to retain the original fields. Second, set its value equal to the value of the corresponding field in the source message. Third, perform any transformations on the value in that object. Loop through all the sub-items. Last, use the X12 functions in the DTL to complete the trailer segment. At every level of looping, you create a target object, set its properties, transform it as necessary, loop through its subsets if applicable, and end by creating a trailer. Let's walk through this process in more depth, returning to the example of transforming an eligibility request. In the management portal, start by creating a new DTL. Then, set the source and target message classes to nslib.edi.x12.document. Set the source and target doc types to the message type you'll be transforming. In this example, use HIPAA 5010 interchange group 270 to create the interchange envelope in the target message. By selecting this class, you are telling the DTL editor to display the segments for all three nested objects, the interchange envelope, functional group, and transaction set. Note that if your interchange envelope contains transaction sets of differing types, you could also use the non-nested interchange class. You would then need to use subtransformations to modify the functional groups and transaction sets. Starting at this outermost layer, the interchange envelope, set the interchange control header in the target message to equal the value in the source message. To set this header, drag the ISA segment from source to target in the DTL editor. If necessary, perform any transformations on the ISA segment. Next, begin looping over the functional groups within the interchange envelope using a for each loop that references the current iteration and uses a key such as FG key or functional group key. Following the five main steps, begin by creating a functional group in the target message and setting the GS header for this group equal to GS of the current iteration. Let's look at how these two steps are performed in the DTL editor. Start the loop by opening the add action menu and creating a group. This enables you to expand and collapse all your subsequent DTL actions for easy navigation. Complex DTLs can be hundreds of steps long, so it's strongly recommended that you combine them into logically coherent and collapsible sections for easier reading and editing. 
Next, create a for each loop that iterates over the functional groups in the source message. Choose a variable name for the key, which references the object the loop is currently iterating on. In this example, we'll use FG key. Also, select the unload option to unswizzle each object from memory once the loop is complete. This helps optimize performance. Next, use a set activity to create a corresponding functional group in the target message. To instantiate this object, use the X12 functions built into the DTL tool. Next to the value field, click the magnifying glass to open the data transformation function wizard. Then, select X12 new functional group. Enter target as the interchange parent so the functional group can retain a reference to its parent object. Enter group as the doc type to indicate that the envelope document being instantiated is a functional group. Once this functional group is created, modify its GS or functional group header property. Set this property to match the value of the current iteration's GS property in the source message by dragging the GS field from source to target. You have now completed two of the five main steps by creating the functional group and setting its header. The next step is to perform any necessary transforms on this functional group level. In this case, the functional group is just a container for transaction sets, so none are necessary. Proceed to the next step, looping over the transaction sets. This process is similar to the one we used to create the loop for functional groups. In the DTL editor, create a subgroup for the transaction sets to keep your transformation organized. Then, create a nested for each loop to iterate over the source transaction sets. Select the unload option and choose a key variable name such as TS key or transaction set key to reference the current iteration. For each transaction set, follow the same process used with the functional groups. First, instantiate a corresponding transaction set in the target. Second, set the header in the target to the value in the source. Third, do any transformations on this level. Fourth, end that segment with the appropriate trailer using the X12 complete trailer and return clear function. Let's look at this in the DTL editor. Use a set activity to create a corresponding transaction set in the target message using the built-in X12 functions. Create the set activity, then use the magnifying glass next to the value field to open the data transform function wizard. Select X12 new transaction set as the function, then enter a reference to the current functional group iteration, FG key, as the group parent, and 270 as the doc type. Using the set activity, Set the current iteration's transaction set header in the target, st, to the value in the source. At this point, the data transformation has reached the innermost layer of the X12 message and can access the data segments within this transaction set. For segments that remain the same, simply drag from the source to the target message object to set those fields. In this case, you will be applying a lookup table on the N4 segment. To apply this table, First expand loop 2000A, then loop 2000B, loop 2000C, loop 2100C, and the N4 segment. Expand each of these in both the source message and the target message. As you can see, all of the fields of the N4 segment, including state or province code, are now visible. Drag the source state or province code to the target source of the same name to create a set activity. In both the value and property fields of this set activity, locate all the empty parentheses and add a 1 to them, indicating that this transformation applies to the first iteration of each of these loops. Then, in the panel to the right, click the magnifying glass next to the value field for the set activity to open the function wizard. Select Lookup from the function dropdown, then State Code Lookup as the table. This lookup table contains a list of states as the key field and state abbreviations as the value. Click OK to save this function. Once you have completed any transforms, it is time to start concluding the loops and climbing back out of the innermost layer. To complete this loop, use the set action, selecting the current transaction set iteration, TS key. In that set action, Open the data transform function wizard and select X12 complete trailer and return clear function. In the document field, enter the reference to the newly created transaction set in the current iteration of the target message. Optionally, 
save the message by entering a 1 in the save field. Exit that wizard, then click to move out of the for each loop and the innermost group. Perform the same operation to complete the functional group iteration. Click a set activity modifying the current functional group iteration and open the functional group wizard to call the x12 complete trailer and return clear function. This time, enter a reference to the current functional group iteration in the x12 document. Click OK to exit that wizard and click out of all loops and groups to arrive at the interchange envelope, the uttermost layer. Repeat the process once more using the set action to call the x12 complete trailer and return clear method on the interchange object, in this case the target message of the DTL. This time, however, enter a scratch variable in the property field, such as temp. Open the function wizard to call x12 complete trailer and return clear, and enter target as the x12 document. You have now completed an x12 DTL. Compile the transformation and test it by going to the tools tab and clicking test. Using the test utility, paste an X12 message into the input field, click the test button, and verify that the output message has been correctly transformed. In this case, you can see that the N4 segment state field has replaced Wisconsin with the two letter state abbreviation WI, meaning the transformation worked correctly. In this video, you learned how to create a data transformation on the nested X12 messaging envelope structure using the DTL editor. For more information, visit the InterSystems documentation website.